All right, so my daughter and I are gonna make something <laughs> called a bacon explosion. If you're not familiar with this, um, I've got two, um, two two pound sections of thick cut bacon. And I kind of cheated. I went to Costco to get these ones. I normally get them at my local butcher, um, but I just moved to Portland, so, you know, I'm kind of winging it. And then, um, you usually need about a pound of sausage, um, but we're gonna do two of them tonight, because I got enough to do two, so I've got three pounds of, um, sausage and then um you need some butt rub i just like saying that butt rub you like saying that butt rub sure i saying butt rub is kind of fun yeah okay. you need butt rub and then you're gonna need some barbecue sauce uh stubs is actually pretty good um but it happened to be on sale and i'm partially cheap and then open your because we're mildly deviants, we're gonna use some jalapenos in this one. Um, we're gonna saute these, but I think we're gonna pull the um, the seeds out of them. I think I'm gonna have my daughter do the sauteing of these as we get going. You wanna start on those? Sure. So, um, and I'm going to have my son get to work on holding the video camera, young man, as we get going on this. So, key thing throughout all of this, since we're working with food stuff, is hand washing with soap, like we've got over there. Oh, no, yeah. So, here, yeah. you're on camera duty. Yeah, yeah. So, I need to wash my hands. Sure. Yeah, that sounds great. Do you remember how to cut them up so that you um, yep. get the seeds carefully removed? Right? Yep. And then in doing that, be careful that you don't um, touch your eyes or yep. anything else for any period. Come get a yep. close up so you can see. Wait, this way So this one of the things I like this, to do this here. This way, I don't yeah, hold the Wait, no, right. So one of the things I like to do is you can see the veins that run the long way. I like to cut in between, right? I like to cut in between the vein all the way down and reconnect on the other side because that's a pretty good way to um, get all the way around. And then when you split it all the way open, then you've still got all the meat connected to it. Um, and then you can cut, yep. like we talked yep. about, you can cut all that out pretty easily. And then you still get loose seeds, which is what we're trying. In this case, we're gonna try and remove. So stay zoomed in so you can see what she's doing over there. Uh, no, 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 I'm not looking at you. I'm going to forget. So a text. Uh, wax paper, honey? Yeah. Yeah. That again. Yep, so if all the seed's gone, mm -hmm. we should decrease the, the spice That'll take away the spiciness, Abby. So the seeds sure. and oils that yeah. make it spicy. So without that, they're just flavor. Still pretty tasty. Yeah. And then by 
say by cutting out all the seeds, right, we're left with the meat, which has a really good taste, but we're getting all the super, super spicy parts of it out. Oh, We're making a baking explosion. It's bacon wrapped around sausage, wrapped around bacon. Now I'm just I'm not sure how what the yeah. lag is with this. No, they'll they'll hear oh. you in real time. Okay. And then the whole thing ultimately is going to go into a green egg smoker uh, yeah. for about four hours. We're going to smoke it tomorrow. That goes within the internal layer. Yeah, and the jalapenos, we're going to saute them up next. Yep. Yeah. Wow, oh, I forgot we were really good at doing this. So, Zavi, do you want to come over here while I start working on the, yeah. the bacon? So, this is two pounds of thick cut bacon and the reason we're using thick cut is I'm going to make a weave with this that ultimately serves as the outer shell for the bacon e explosion itself and uh, the thin cut stuff just doesn't work as well um, it's got to um, encase the whole of the package uh, for the bacon explosion itself. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I like to use stuff that's from a local butcher, but when I was running around at my local Costco, I saw this stuff, and it's got a pretty consistent... Ideally, you'd want stuff that's as near uh, linear as possible because I'm going to be weaving it. So this is this is pretty decent. And I'm, I've lined up because I'm going to be doing two of them um, together. So to make a weave, it's a lot like being in um, in grade school. Yeah. Right. So that one's under. That one's over. That means that this one is under, and you alternate over to under for the whole of it. And that this one, and you want to consistently use the pattern for laying them down. So this one, I'll lay down the same way. And I'm doing it on wax paper because in the end, I've got to be able to manipulate them as well. Wax paper is pretty good for that. And then I'm going to be putting some seasoning on it, and I know it can get a little messy. Um, and the wax paper tends to work better than like a wood cutting board. So that one goes on top. Yeah. It's also easier to wrap, uh, to roll up wrapping or the wax paper than it is to roll up a cutting board. Yep, absolutely. All right, so that's like that. That one. That's like ice cream, sir. Do this one backwards. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and dice them. And. Um, the trick is, I mean, really, you can see that the first half of this is nice and consistent and thick, but then the other end of it kind of tapers off. And that's going to come into play, you know, over in the lower quadrant of, of this whole project. I mean, it is what it is. They are just using cost Well, so. I know, but... Yeah. You try to pick the best ones that you can. So sometimes when you have really, really crappy ones or crappy sections, you sort of skip those. And it's kind of the reason why you, particularly if you end up buying them from a local butcher, there's sections that you use and sections that you don't. Crap. 
did it again. Because you're really, ideally, if these were all very consistent, I'd have a weave without any gaps in this thing at all. And kind of one of the questions is, if you come and look over here, some of this is actually a better weave. So what I may end up doing is looking to see where that starts. Which would be about there. Yeah, and I may end up pulling out some of these pieces. because those are better pieces than these ones, right? Much better than like this. Yeah. So. All right, so I'll set these ones aside. We'll mince them up later. They'll get center. used, yeah, they sure will get used. One, two, three, one, two, three, so. Because the tighter you can get a weave on this, the better. Because really you don't want it, anything coming out of this if you can prevent it. That's a much better piece. Mm -hmm. See how consistent it is across the whole of it? That's what you want to weave with. Yeah, much better piece to weave with. All right, over, un under, over, under, over. So under. Under and under. Right. So then very last one All right so there's a pretty good weave and when I try to squeeze it in as tight as I can trying to get it so that there's nothing left over so these are parts that I'm not going to use can you grab a okay plate from underneath there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you can go ahead and just grab a small. A small Yeah, probably a small one. So, nicely minced. Yeah. It's about to be sauteed. Put it on the back one, and you want a little bit of oil. Over here, we're putting up the mix. Yeah, probably bacon, like medium. As we only have mm, that much left for wrapping over here. So, part of the strategy is in having two pounds, is you have enough to make the wrap. So, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six by one, two, three, four, five, six. Ish. Whoops. I can do one more across the bottom. By soon to be six. Soon to be six. I think I've done some that have been like five by five, but six by six is a pretty good wrap. And then I still have leftovers. I have the pieces I didn't want to use, and then I still have some leftovers. And that's just fine because I actually need leftovers to be used 
later on in building the Center. centerpiece. So again, here I've got the a piece to start. So I'm actually going to take a look to take a look to kind of see where where I want to start with it. Pull it apart in the middle. See what it looks like. And that's fair. Yeah. Maybe what I'll do is I'll start the second one using some of these ones that I have left over here. the raw bacon. No, no because cooking it adds a bit of the texture and the flavor. And, that it's not raw, it's and smoking it is really what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah, which is why we have these over here. We have, we plan to add more flavor into it with the smoking. Which flavor have salty the peppers? Hmm? Yeah. Okay. What about it? Yeah, what about it? What do you, what's your question? Like what should I do? Should I just so, so, did you add a little bit of? Oil? Yeah, but we're planning to add more texture, more fun, more uh, flavor. You might do it, and you might find it good. But we're going for a slightly different uh, taste. Because we're using some wood chips, and I don't remember which ones we have. Yeah. So that's pretty good. We also plan to throw in yep. some and then just red barbecue sauce. Zombie. Hmm. Yep. So yeah, now that you're done, you'll want to use. So because jalapenos. Um, Get a lot of their seasoning uh, from the oils. I'm not going to get that out of Right? She's, yeah. she's, she, because she's done working with the, with the jalapenos, she's re washing her hands with. Um, Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with, with soap and um, water to make sure she gets all the oils off because she's done working with the hot spots. And then now she's going to start sauteing them with uh, mm -hmm. just a little bit of oil over. Uh, like a low, low to medium, medium heat um, until they get nice and soft um, and just like gently cooked. It'll probably take you know eight to ten minutes at this temperature that we do that. So there's the kind of problems I run into with this stuff is some of the bacon's actually breaking. That's all right, we'll be okay. Oops, right on top. Oh, but these ones I've been doing the other way. A consistency to help keep the weave fitting together. It's kind of nice working with a thick cut bacon. Yeah, it's really. Uh, one. Oops, I sure am, aren't I? All right, so. The thick cut bacon's nice to work with. It's good to cook with. And this stuff from Costco isn't that bad. 
I kind of like getting stuff from our local butcher, but I need to go find one in our area. And a lot of times when I make these weaves, I just go five by five. One, two, three, four, five. But in this case, I'm trying to do these ones six by six because of the fact they've got this thick end and this thin end um, for this one. Just to kind of make sure that I get a really good fitting all the way through to the end. This other one here has a much tighter, better weave than this one's turning out to have. Yeah, because this one has better form-fitting mm -hmm. square ones. Yep, absolutely. So, if you make this yourself with your own bacon, you may get somewhere in between these two. No, I expect to. Yeah, absolutely. So you have the weird end over here, and you have the nice uniformed one over yeah. here. But the trick is, you really do want a nice square piece because you're going to be um, you know rolling it and working with it and laying stuff out so now I've got here I've got about a half a pack of sausage yeah. left over and then I've got some more over there so what I'm going to do right here with this one because I'm going to be cooking it um, give me the big one the big if one. you would use this knife because I'm just going to be cooking it up All right I'm not doing anything fancy with this stuff The, we don't want the large uh, on it, we want the normal. Small. So the jalapenos under work over the here. Smallest the smallest size though. Slowly the simmer the as smallest the rest the size is the being uh, worked so the, the, the smallest the size of the pan, the large is even bigger. Okay. Yeah, so you want to try it. Yeah. So in cooking, she's busy sauteing the peppers. And I'm going to be cooking up the leftover of the bacon. Which you can add as much or as little as you want, as long as you can manage to roll your weave and sausage around it. You don't have to necessarily have a jalapeno, you can. They add nice texture and spice. It's good flavor. Yeah, you could probably add other things in the center. The cheese. Cheese yeah. is a good thing to add. Yeah, so one thing you can put in is cheese, balance out the jalapeno. It's you can customize it to a bit, but you definitely want bacon on both the inside and the outside. And you still want to be able to actually wrap it up. Yeah. So how are you feeling about those peppers? I don't know. It's starting to look all right. So in cooking up these leftover scraps of bacon, what I'm going to do is I want to cook them. I'm going to try and cook them on a lower temperature than, I don't know, a medium temp. Cook them kind of slow, I guess. Uh, you know, it's a high temperature guy. I, I, I got okay. it, princess. Um, I don't want to be throwing oil all over the place, I guess is one of the things. Um, because in the end, I want them, the key for doing this part of it is, I really want them to be really crispy. That's the effect I want um, with these leftover bits of the thick cut bacon. I really want them to be crispy. The jalapenos that we're cooking over here, what I really want for them is to, I want the flavor with them, but also I want them to be nice and tender. Um, so those actually are starting to look like they're getting to be the right point, which is kind of nice. 
So let's come back over here. Time for the butt rub. It's time for some butt rub. Although, let me get this out of here. Clean my workspace. So this is the first set of spices that we're using. Yeah. So, so we're gonna throw some butt rub on there. And we're gonna throw some butt rub generously all across the bacon. One of the beauties of having wax paper down is I don't feel bad about spilling it. Spilling it. I don't feel bad at all about spilling it. Okay. Smells really good though. And you can see that this one here, the second one, it definitely has some breaks and some gaps in the weave. It's nowhere near as tight a weave as the first one. And that's all about the cut of the bacon. But, you know, it is what it is. It's not going to stop me from trying to make something out of it. So trying to get a nice, generous bit, not too much, right? But that looks about at a layer that about makes me happy. Okay. It has a slight uh, coloring of cooked bacon. Yeah, it was pretty good. So before you take it off, let's let's side and come over here. Add more, you can add less. Doesn't matter. Oh, right. So I'm just about happy with those. Watch your shadow. So I'm just about happy with those peppers. And we're gonna pull those off and set those aside. Let them cool down a little bit. So let's get you like a plate onto which you can put those. Ah. Jalapenos, which will go inside um, the wrap once we have a little bit more work done. Yeah. Alright, so we got those going. So now, the next thing we've got, right? So here's, we've got two wraps, and I've actually got three pounds of sausage. Um, you can get this at a, so this is right, so I'm using Jimmy Dean. I often go to my local butcher and ask them for uh, sausage meat that they make locally. Um, Cause you, honestly, I get far better sausage. Um, and usually I use about a pound per. So in this case, I'm expecting that I'm gonna have leftovers uh, out of this. Uh, the Jimmy Dean stuff works pretty good. I've used it before. Um, but Jimmy Dean also makes a really spicy yeah, version spicy that I've used in this, um, which totally freaks out some people sometimes because it really is kind of spicy. Um, but this one's pretty middle of the road. So we'll use this one today. Again, this is sort of a Costco solution because it's not complicated.
And so because we're actually transferring this, you know, really we're going to be putting a roll inside a roll. Um, I'm kind of wondering. The traditional answer is you take your sausage and you spread it out and make a nice like half inch to one inch layer across the totality of your weave. Um, but I have this very nice roll. I'm kind of wondering if I even want to bother doing that. I kind of guess I need to, just to make sure that the weave is going to fit all the way over it. Because honestly, yeah, I'm going to need to do that. So, I pinch off about half of it. You want to? Yeah. Okay. You wash your hands? I'll do it again, just in case. Okay, so pinch this out to about the right. And then it's just an issue of then kind of starting to spread it out. So you don't want to disturb the, the weave too much, right? Because you put all that seasoning down on it very carefully. Right, but you do want to try to get a nice Even. Oh, we don't have to cover our seam this time. Hmm? We don't have to cover our seam this time. Yep. Really yeah, last time we were using. Um, Two halves. Yeah, we were using single pound. We were using less. Half pound. Yeah, we were using half one pound Jimmy Dean ones. So we were using less. but it's important to try to get it as even and consistent across the whole of it because the whole thing is going to roll better. It's a lot like playing with Play-Doh, I guess. How do you feel about yours? Uh, I think that's pretty good. Yours looks great. Aha. So try to try to get away from the left and right edges a yeah. little bit more because that's the part where it's gonna stick out. Yeah. Right? So try to curve those parts in and then um, redirect them. Yeah, redirect that stuff someplace else. Right? some more butt rub and then some barbecue sauce yeah. with it as well. Amazingly enough, once again, you could have any range, uh, any range between these two or even um, farther out for what your insides looks like, but 
In this case, it doesn't really matter, as this is the end slide. No one will see this. What's the question going? Huh? No, I was just pointing out the fact that, so again, we have a nice, perfect, flat one here. Thank you. Yeah. And we have this one here. And you have any wide range, but it won't really matter. Yeah, so in this case, right, so because we're going to ultimately roll this one up and over this way, she's done a really good job of, of clearing some distance on this side and on this side, which is really nice. And then in this case, this one, it's not perfectly square, and I know that this one's going to have more of an issue on this side when it rolls, so I'm not too, too worried about it. And they're doing a pretty good job of holding... Uh, a little bit on the two ends as well. Both of them actually look kind of good. I'm really kind of pleased. So the next thing that we'll do is put some butt rub on those. Um, why large or small? Uh, I used the small one. Should I try or? Hmm? That's how I do I do it. Go for it. Okay. You saw how I did it, right? Yeah. Should put it on yours too? Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Yay, butt rub. Great. And now I just need to get bacon cooked. Yeah. That's the so I'm just waiting on these little bits here. Okay. We get a pretty, once we have a pretty good amount, and the, uh, um, and they're cooked to decent amount, so we're going to put them in there. Uh, currently we just have a bacon weave with butt rub on top of that, with then with the sausage and butt rub on top of that. We plan to throw the jalapenos and the bacon uh, inside and wrap it all up. As well as, I think, this hot sauce, right? Hot sauce is going in. Barbecue sauce? Yeah. We'll, we'll put some barbecue sauce. Yeah. We'll put some stuffed yeah. barbecue sauce in there as well. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a, this is a six by six weave of thick cut bacon. And then it got butt rub across, it got some butt rub across the uh, thick cut bacon. And then each of these got a pound and a half of sausage. And then now we put some uh, butt rub on top of that. And then come on over here. We've got the rest down here. We've got the rest of the thick cut bacon. I bought four pounds of it and I used, I picked the best I could first for making the weave and then all the leftovers get cooked to use either uh, to bribe the staff who's helping me or because mom's not here, is she? Yeah, mom's not here. Yeah. To either to bribe the staff who's helping me or to go into the middle. So the goal in cooking this stuff is to get it crispy because that's a texture uh, thing. Yeah. And then if you come over, we cooked some earlier, we cooked, we cooked jalapenos, but only after we defanged them and cooked out all the seeds because we want the taste of the jalapenos without the heat. 
So we very carefully, um, my daughter, very carefully um, deseeded them, yep. but kept all the meat, the jalapenos. The parts of the trailer. Yeah, so that, that'll that go in the middle. And that's something that we do when we do our bacon explosion. It's a non-traditional piece, but it's something that we really like in ours because it really brings out a good flavor. And there's something else that a lot of people will do with jalapenos is they'll bring in um, cheeses. Um, I've seen people do it with like uh, cheddar or also with um, real hard cheeses that have a real slow melt. Um, cause, because we're gonna cook this thing and it's only gonna get up to about 205 when we smoke it. Um, cheeses that are gonna react very well with that are good to have in the middle as well. Because uh, they'll go really well with the jalapenos also. So if you've got some favorite cheeses that you want to try in the middle, um, go for it. We, we don't. We just use the jalapenos because we're all about the flavor. And honestly, we like bacon the most. <laughs> I mean, let's just cut to the chase, you know. It's bacon. Yeah, bacon. We want, we want bacon. We're carnivores. Yeah, totally. So, around to the side because okay. the bacon is uh, no, part of the bacon right the bacon. Post being done. Right? Because we're trying to get bacon. In this case, we want it to be crispy because when it comes time to actually put it in the middle, um, I'm going to tear it up into little tiny pieces. So, having it be crispy when it comes time to cut into the middle of it, I want it to be, I want the texture the most. I want, I want people to, to feel it. That's what I'm after. So that's why I'm also taking the time to cook them in like small chunks. Because it doesn't really matter. You should probably taste one of those to see how they are. Are they coming out okay? Are we doing all right? right onto it. Why don't you follow her? Um, you guys might want to empty the sink, sink? Yeah. for the hot stuff in mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Well, what Yeah, so try to rip those up even, okay, even a little smaller. Okay. Yeah. Because in the end, when this whole thing is cooked and smoked, um, it really comes out like a really, really tender meatloaf, but with this awesome bacon shell all the way around the outside. And so having these bacon pieces ripped up into tiny, tiny, tiny pieces and then especially with these really small jalapeno um, uh, sauteed pieces in the middle, um, that really adds to that continued sort of meatloaf feel to it, except it's not evil meatloaf like your grandmother made. 
it's like bacon, sausage, meat, carnivore. Pork, 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 and more pork. Tyrannosaurus, Rex, Jurassic World kind of awesomeness in all the best kind of ways deal. So having it small is like ideal. Good, isn't it? Yeah, it's working out okay. Mm -hmm. Kind of hot though. The bacon's hot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hot things are hot. And it's being cooked. Not even a foot away from you. No, then it's more like a foot, like a yard. The bacon here is the important part. Yeah, just like the other bacon. It's up there. Yep, along with the other pork. And the amount of bacon you put inside depends on how much bacon you have. Not how much bacon you want. Say how much bacon you have. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of one of those. I mean, it's like one of those great philosophical questions in life. How much bacon do you want? I mean, so you, can you can you really put a metric to that? And I don't know that you can. The the balance of, of middle contents kind of goes to the question of how good of a weave do you have and how much sausage do you have. So in this case, we've only got about a pound and a half of sausage. And a lot of the times I make this with two pounds of sausage each. So we actually probably have room in this one for quite a bit of bacon in the okay. middle. Right? Because normally we have about an extra half pound of sausage. So we're probably in pretty good shape on this one. Um, for it. So we're probably doing pretty good. But we'll probably eat some more. That's mm. Yeah, too. that too. It's a rare delicacy. Alright. My bacon's been taken. He stole my bacon. Bacony hands. That's a film. What do you mean? That's looking pretty good. Yeah. So let me just get these last little cut pieces done. And then we can transition to doing the green peppers or doing the jalapenos. Yeah. I think that's about the right amount of jalapenos all together that you've got there. Thank you. How many you got? And there's bacon on Tiny little crumbs of bacon all over my hands. And that is not a problem.
That's good. So that's bacon. bacon. Hands. I have bacon hands now. Yeah. I guess I should wash them. Yeah. It's always a good call to wash your hands. Alright. So now. Let me put down some peppers. So these are jalapenos. I got a couple of seeds in them, right? But for the most part, I did a pretty good job of getting all the seeds out. My daughter did of getting all the I seeds out. It so it's just the meat, right? You can see one. There's a seed in in there on that one. Right there. Right. Um, so really, it's just the meat of three good-sized jalapenos. And we went up and bought these at a local market. Um, and in shopping for them, I wanted three large jalapenos, and I wanted ones. And we were very careful in selecting them, and we, we picked them for their meat. Um, because I wanted them... I, I knew we were going to prepare them like this. So... You know, we, we we picked them for those particular qualities. So big three big jalapenos seem to be about right. Because um, I've done one or two for a single bacon explosion. Um, in this case, I thought three would get us about the right amount for what we wanted. Uh, in this case. And these ones are, are coming out just about right. I like I like how these peppers are. And then again, I'm kind of looking to get them into the middle, but I want to be careful that I'm getting all the meat out to the edges as well, because I do kind of want equal distribution. As much as I can, because I want everybody who eats to get their fair share from the first bite through the last. Instead of the parts that I mostly end up getting, which would be right about there, where it's all hungry. <laughs> which is good for you. Mm -hmm. Good for you, Tyler. Yeah, you should get all of them. They'll clear your nose out. Yeah, but not all of them. So huh? then, right, so now it's time for some barbecue sauce. And so in this case, if you look over here, right, I've been preparing some hickory chips to go into the green egg um, tomorrow anyway. So in this case, I've got some smoky mesquite um, flavoring as, as well because I want something that's going to be complementary uh, to what the smoke itself is going to do. So in this case, I'm going to add this into the middle because um, it'll stay in the middle. And then this is the same one that I'll use on the outside of it as well um, when I actually get it on to the smoker. I'll lather this up quite a bit on the outside. Right, so there you go. That's how sort of the two of those look. And since I'm getting ready to lay hands on these, let me wash my hands again. Make sure I got nothing else. Going on. And then we'll do sort of the last stage of this, which is get these wrapped. Do you want to pull out two of the trays on which we're going to put these guys? So now, since I'm kind of, I'll go with the good one better. Get all the little extra pieces out of here. So now what, I, what I'm really supposed to do is I'm supposed to roll the sausage and then I'm supposed to roll the bacon. That never works for me, ever. I'm going to see what I can do to roll the whole thing.
a small bit trying to escape, but it's not a oh, lot. Oh, yeah. I know. But then the beauty of this is... Yeah. And then I tuck my ends. I can tuck my ends in. So in this case, I've done this one where I've rolled the whole thing together. Right? And I'll do the other one the other way. And I'll show you the difference between the two. So come around the other side so you can see this other end. Right? And what I'm trying to do... Now what this guy is, I'll pick him up and oh. put him on there, right? And that whole guy will get smoked that way. So in that one, I rolled the whole piece all together. But in this case, what I'm going to try and do is see if the sausage, I can get the sausage to roll. Maybe it's thick enough. I don't think so. Uh, maybe. Because the idea is if I can get the sausage to roll. Together. Then I'll have sausage rolled separate from the bacon rolling. But I'm catching my fingers on some of these weaves underneath. But once I got that sorted out, right, now I'm sort of getting it going. Right, so then once I can get this sort of, this rolled, right, now what I can do is I can turn around and roll all of this the other way together as a separate piece back so that all the sausage gets tucked in completely inside. So if you look right here, the difference here is now all the sausage is inside. I'm going to completely encase the sausage yeah. all inside the bacon. There's and that's no the escaping. Like the absolutely. And that's the reason, that's the technique that we always talk about in doing the bacon explosion is in doing it this way. Shotzi. Come here. Put put your hand down on the paper. Left hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Okay. Right? So that's the reason we talk about doing that technique. So now Right, I still have my ends that I need to wrap up, but the, the, the seam that I've got is all bacon on bacon, and it doesn't come anywhere near the, the, um, the sausage meat. Whereas the one I did over here, if you look at this one, the sausage meat is right there. Yeah, so this one, I'm going to smoke on this t side up, but I'm always going to have this sort of crazy seam right here on this one. And when I smoke this one, mm -mm, I'm completely not going to have a problem with it. In fact, I don't even know where the seam is on this one. Seam somewhere. Oh, I know. Where is it? Oh, there it is. All right. And I'm going to try and put this one... Up, uh, but it is a totally different beast. That's the way it's supposed to be done, right there, right? Far different beast. Seam, no seam. That's the way you do it. So I made two of them, did them the different ways because I had the two. This will cook just fine. I've cooked, I've cooked bunches like this, but this one is much better way to do it if you can do it. So, what are your questions at this time about bacon explosions? Uh, do you need to know about actual cooking temperatures and stuff? Does anybody have any questions? Okay. 
Anybody asking anything? Okay, so I'm going to put these in and smoke them for about four hours. And I'm going to smoke them um, until they get to 205 degrees. Uh, I'm going to lather them pretty hard with the barbecue sauce early on. Um, okay. Just to make sure they're good and covered. Um, and then I'm going to seal them up. Uh, after the first hour, I'm going to seal them up in foil so they get cocooned in and that they're able to cook uh, inside the foil after the first hour. Uh, and I'm going to run a probe through the foil. Um, and that'll be it until the temp, the temp gauge tells me that they've reached all the way up to 205. And then they'll be done, and I'll let them sit for probably a half hour, 45 minutes before we serve them. So okay. it'll be awesome. All right, there you go. Bacon explosions. Uh, good appetit. You want to grab some bacon?